Um, yeah. I, <laughs> um, uh, for me, it, I, sort of the realization that this affected people on some level was when I started doing some conventions and things, and and people would come up and say, you know, 35-year-old, 40-year-old men would come and say, oh my god, this had such an influence on me as a, a kid, and I am showing this to my kid. It's, it's the kind of a movie that is, is timeless in that sense, and, and, um, uh, and it's, it's relatable, and it has a, such a wonderful, uplifting message that is universal and um, timeless, really. And, and, but at the time, um, no, I'm going to say, you know, you do the movie, and you're, you're in the middle of your, you know, burgeoning career, and you go on to the next thing, and... Um, but it, it's so uh, gratifying, and I'm so grateful to have been a part of this on so many levels, which makes it even more special that you can say all these years later that this has affected people in a very specific and special way. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. And yeah, totally unexpected to be here 35 years late. But I'm only. <laughs> I don't I don't do the math, but never mind. I'm happy to be here. Did you have your hand up? Can we just see what version of the film are you showing? Blu-ray or it's a DCP. Yeah. Uh, oh, one just to answer the question too, I, I think uh, you know, when it was released it, it uh, uh, we started, you know, you, you get feedback very in, in uh, you know from just I don't know how. But, but the studio would get feedback, and they, the initial feedback was that it was going to be a gigantic hit. And then, as the day went on and through the weekend, they went, oh, it's not okay, it's going to be okay. So I, I remember feeling disappointed. I remember that because I, the expectation turned out to be so high to begin with. So, and it wasn't until a couple years later that I was, uh, I was, I remember I was working on, a, on, on my next movie, and I was doing, looking for locations in, in Toronto. And a friend of mine uh, called me and said, Nick, uh, you know what's really playing well on tape is Last Starfight. I went, what's tape? <laughs> Literally, this was the beginning of this home video, these home video thing. I had no idea, and of course, that really, really, I mean, I think maybe many people here is that where you first saw it was on tape or on, on TV. So it really had the stain power, which was, which was great, you know, to, to, to see. And, uh, and you know, as, as we're staying, saying here, you know, 35 years later, there's still a lot of love. So we're so happy. I have to, I have to say something. Our script supervisor is a woman named Faye. And I remember this one thing she said, remember Faye? Faye Brenner was her name. And she, and, and, and we were talking about, what do you think this is going to be? What do you think this movie is going to be? And she just looked at me and she said, I think it's a pot boiler. And I didn't know what that was. And I, and I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, I don't think people are going to get it initially, but I think in the long run, it's going to have a lot of sort of impact. You know, she was a 30-year-old woman, but it was like, I didn't know how she could be so prescient, but it was like, way to go, Faye. I mean, <laughs> and I think we have time for one more before we begin the movie, so right there, sir. Uh, this is a question for Nick Castle. Uh, side note, just real quick, I just want to say I've always appreciated your collaborations with John Carpenter, especially the script. Being that, I mean, I, certainly this movie in Tron, that was just in two different studios, um, but being that that was kind of what, you know, this is considered like the second CG, big CG film sort of in history, was there ever, any other, was there ever, ever any conversation between the uh, special effects team on this movie and maybe anybody, even though it was in the studio, but anybody from Tron saying, hey, you, you've had the most amount of experience on doing live action against CG, you know, was there any conversation about, can you kind of point us in the right direction on stuff, or was it kind of all just in your camp of, you know, we're just going to go ahead and do this? I, uh, as far as I know, there was no connection between the Tron uh, 
artist and, and our, our team. Uh, someone might know <laughs> it sounds like. Go ahead. So the, the, the effects for Tron came from a company called Triple I, Information International Incorporated. And uh, the guys who started digital productions, John Wick and Gary Demos, had been working at Triple I. And during the whole Tron process, they kind of left on less than friendly terms. And uh, so they went and started digital productions. And so they had originally been with that team. In fact, John Whitney Sr. had done some art at III, um, had been in slit scan and so on. Um, so digital productions was actually sort of a, a splinter off of III. But uh, there wasn't a lot of friendship between the two companies. <laughs> <laughs> the two productions. Thank you. Oh, uh, we'll uh, yeah. um, what was it like working in Hollywood back then in the 80s? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah. well, 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 the question was, what was it like working back in the uh, in the 80s? Uh, well, since I don't work in the 2010s, I'm not sure how to. <laughs> well. Uh, that being said, um, uh, there were, uh, you know, right now is basically, I don't know if it's a golden age, but it's certainly so much product going on in various mediums that is, there are so many ways to, to create. Uh, I'm, I'm jealous in, in a way from, from that. I was fortunate to be able to break into a movie in the, into that, that world where, you know, there was less, in a sense, Product. I hate to use that word. Uh, uh, being 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 done. So um, um, you know, uh, but I, I'm sure the, the the same issues have come up from then and now, which is, you know, this is a, 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 a it is the craziest kind of art art in the world, if you call it art, or inter even entertainment, you know, because it's so expensive. And it has, uh, it, and there's so many hands in the pie. Um, it's it's a, it's a difficult one uh, for anyone that uh, you know wants wants to create, um, and um, I I don't see that changing particularly. Um, we were the first one of the first generations to come out of film school. Uh, myself, right before me, George Lucas, and. and Francis Coppola to 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 make uh, to make movies in, in the studio system, which was pretty at, the, at that time pretty crazy. Uh, now it's uh, now, and, and I think in, in a good way, a, a lot of people have the ability to show their wares in the new digital way that they can, uh, and 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 create a, a, a create. Uh, um, a product uh, and and a uh, uh, and their name out there in, in, in a way that's uh, hopefully more uh, easy. It, it makes it more easy, although you have much more competition. I would say. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if that helps uh, give you a sense of that, but it's uh, it's what I went through. Maybe the actors it might be different. Well, I've noticed that way more people are involved. Like when we were younger, not a large percentage of the people that we went to high school with became actors. Like, I always feel like there was only a few people that decided to become professional actors. Like, you know, one or two out of a huge high school, sometimes nobody, you know. It, it seems like now more people get involved in the being actors, you know, more people choose being actors because it's a, it's a less of a gypsy kind of existence. But when we were young, it was like a very, very low percentage um, success rate, and so it wasn't a, it wasn't a very promising. Um, there was no digital age. There was no you know YouTube stars. There were no like you look up famous people, and two thirds of them are YouTube stars that are eighteen years old. <laughs> Who is that person? <laughs> you know, and and it's strange. You know, it's it's uh, it's a very different world now. If that if that answers your question. Yeah. 
Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that for everybody uh, on every level in this business, there's so much more access in terms of YouTube and I don't know all these digital arenas that you can enter into, and, and it's also a lot cheaper to make movies nowadays, and so a lot of people have more access to doing that if they're if that's what they want to do. But my experience in the '80s was. Um, just such a, a decade or decade and a half of just joy and fun and and, and, and but there was still a sense of sort of the old Hollywood. I mean, it, it, I feel like the things that I work on now, it's just because they can. You know, oh, we can make a digital movie, so let's do it. Then it, it felt sort of more like you had to to work your way up to being in a position to make a movie, or, or you had to earn your stripes, you know, and, and it doesn't feel so much like that anymore. Um, but, I don't know. But, <laughs> uh, but it was a wonderful time for me, personally. Um, and I look back, I love the big hair, I love the shoulder pads, I love the belt. <laughs> Um, it was it was really a, a wonderful time then, and, and so hopefully you know the people that are still in this business and creating and they're doing it with joy and integrity and a sense of purpose and for the right reason because that's how I felt it was back in the eighties and early nineties. This Q and A and celebrating uh, Last Starfighter as 35th anniversary. Also, I just want to really quick uh, give a thank you to Sean Clark as well too for helping to uh, bring you here tonight. So thank you, Sean. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with the Last Starfighter. Uh, just a quick reminder: our next Mad Monster screen will be next month. On March the 13th, it's going to actually be a treat to Dick Miller. Uh, it'll be a screening of A Bucket of Blood. So that will be taking place on March 13th. Take it from him. Please give a big round of applause for Catherine Stewart.